Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me here today. It is a pleasure to be back in person. This is the first one of these we've done in a couple of years because we switched to remote uh, interviews. And that was a nice way to put things on social media to reach a lot of people, but there is something special about being here in person. Being able to shake someone's hand, look them in the eye, and hand over one of our awards. It's also very nice to be able to sit down and to eat with people afterwards. So hopefully, after this is over, you'll join us for a nice meal. Uh, we look forward to celebrating with you. That being said, we did have some success in reaching a wide, wider audience during the pandemic. Not everyone could be here with us in person. But our hope is that if you're here on behalf of one of these awardees today, that you will take some pictures and you will share with your networks. Share their accomplishments. What we want to do is to recognize them for the success they've had, but also to provide an example for young people out there so they can see someone like them who has had success in their career. And so thank you very much. But the real reason we are here is to celebrate the many great achievements of Hispanic Americans. The theme of this year's Hispanic Heritage Month is Unidos, inclusivity for a stronger nation. The theme encourages us to ensure that all voices are represented and welcomed to help build stronger communities and a stronger nation. Something that is very much in the news these days. We know in our office that when different voices are sitting at the table and included in key decisions, the entire community benefits. Whether it's in education, government, business, environment. Diversity and inclusion are essential to our mission here in the Treasurer's Office. This focus directly aligns with our core values of fairness, inclusion, opportunity, and community development. And beyond this mission alignment, we strongly believe and research shows that diversity is good for business. That's why our office is focused on doing more business with firms owned by, my, by minorities, women, veterans, and persons with disabilities. As the state's chief investment officer, we have a special opportunity to increase our business with diverse owned investment firms. Today, we invest approximately $52 billion. That breaks down to around $26 billion in state funds, about $17 billion in college savings funds, and about $9 billion invested for state and local units of government. Now, we discovered that tapping broker-dealers was one of the quickest ways to boost participation of diverse-owned firms. Since I came into office, we increased utilization of diverse-owned broker-dealers. When I came in, we had about 1% through diverse-owned firms. Today, we're about 66%. And that happens because I have a team that believes in diversity as well and has gone out and found capable managers and broker-dealers who make good returns for us in the treasurer's office. But let me put this in another way. In fiscal year 2014, before I came into office, total assets brokered with diverse-owned firms was $603 million. In fiscal year 22, total assets brokered by those firms was $50 billion. That's 83 times more utilization of diverse firms. We've also put an extensive effort into expanding the use of diverse-owned asset managers. Before I became treasurer, the office had just under $18 million under MWVD asset managers. As of June of this year, we had over $4 billion in diverse asset managers. And this includes over $1 billion with Latino-owned firms. So all told, we have achieved a 220-fold increase since I came into office in January of 2015. <laughs> Those are things we can control. We can control the things we can, can control, but we also can push for things outside of our office. We have been working beyond our office to push for greater diversity and inclusion, especially in our nation's boardrooms. A wealth of research shows that diversity benefits corporate decision-making and company performance. Despite this fact, recent data revealed that women occupy only 29% of board seats on the Fortune 500 companies. And Hispanics only occupy 6%. This is something we're working to change. Many corporate leaders agree that diversity will benefit their operations. Our focus is to help them navigate that change. 
We work regionally and nationally to promote corporate board diversity with leadership roles in the Midwest Investors Diversity Initiative, in the 30% Coalition, and chairing the Russell, Russell 3000 Initiative. More than 500 companies have appointed women to their boards for the first time since the coalition started a decade ago. And we will continue to help women and minorities break the glass ceiling and get more opportunities. We are proud of our accomplishments to date. We promise to continue to raise the bar and obtain for inclusion, <coughs> inclusion and opportunities for minorities. So I want to thank you all for coming here today and celebrating with us. So let's move on to recognizing our award recipients. Okay, it's now time to honor some incredible Illinoisans who've made a difference in our community and in our state. We like to recognize people in different walks of life, different industries, different professions, because as I said, we want young people to see someone like them with success in different areas. Because if you can't see yourself, if you can't see someone like you in a certain field, maybe you think it's not open to you. So we start off with our Treasurer's Outstanding Service and Business Award presented to Jose R. Sanchez. He is the president and CEO of Humboldt Park Health. As such, he is Chicago's only Latino hospital CEO and has served as a healthcare professional for an impressive 30 plus years. He serves the community on many boards in Chicago, including the Illinois Hospital Association, the Puerto Rican Arts Alliance, and the City Club of Chicago. Mr. Sanchez is dedicated to enhancing the qualities of services provided by Humboldt Park Health to the surrounding communities, as well as utilizing innovative and collaborative solutions to the challenges that face these communities in regard to health care. As an architect of the Urban Health Conference, Mr. Sanchez, along with hundreds of other healthcare providers, have collaborated to find actionable ways to tackle the disparities that face minority populations in the healthcare systems. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, thanks, everyone, and uh, thank you to you, uh, uh, the Illinois State Treasurer, Michael Fredericks, and his entire team for celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month uh, with intention and recognizing uh, the contributions of the Latinx diaspora uh, to our state. I did a little bit of research, and I found that with over 150,000 Latino-owned businesses, and the Illinois Latino GDP exceeding $100 billion, yes, with a B, billion dollars, the culture and vitality of the Hispanic community are not only significant but essential to the, to the state of Illinois. I am honored to receive this award on behalf of, of all of my uh, uh, colleagues, uh, but also I'm also very honored to have been recognized uh, with my uh, state uh, uh, representative, Omar Aquino, who is a very dear friend of, of, of ours. You know, we were at the forefront of the pandemic, and we are honored to say that uh, even though we risk, uh, put ourselves at risk all the time, uh, certainly we did it We pride, and we honored, and we saved many lives. So on behalf of all of this, I want to uh, thank you all, and I also want to thank all of the other honorees who are getting a recognition today. So, with that, we will enjoy the food, and I will be awaiting for my award. Great. Office's Outstanding Service and Leadership Award is presented to Mona Noriega. <laughs> Ms. Noriega is the chair of the Illinois Human Rights Commission. She has been a trailblazer since the 1970s, helping women build their community and as an advocate for Latina lesbians. Ms. Noriega has served as the commissioner and board chair of the City of Chicago's Commission on Human Relations and helped establish the Midwest Regional Office of Lambda Legal Defense and served as its regional director. This organization works to support and expand civil liberties for the LGBTQIA community. Her passion for equity and drive to bring recognition to those in the LGBTQ plus community who need a voice has led to her success and a lifelong advocate and a voice for so many. So, good afternoon. I don't know who recommended me for this, I don't know, really, but thank you. It's always an honor to be recognized and to be recognized along with my other esteemed honorees today. But more important than the recognition is the work. 
Of course, I'm speaking to the choir here. We have a straight tre state treasurer committed to doing what is right for the state of Illinois. And, s <laughs> and hello, you staff, who are committed to serving the public. And I'm speaking to all of you, all of whom are here and are civically engaged. I thank all of you for your service. As it's so very important in today's polarized climate that demonizes some people and elevates others. On the one hand, my father and family would recognize the continued racism, but on the other hand, they would also recognize the strides that have been made because of the work we have been doing together. And my father especially would have been proud. I am, we are, all of us are their dreams. So thank you for making this recognition, for doing the work of making this world a better place for all, and for helping to make our ancestors' dreams come true. Uh, the Treasurer's Office also offers an award for commitment and education. And the recipient this year is presented to Dr. Andrea Guerrero. Dr. Andrea Guerrero is in her second year as superintendent of Waverly Community Unit School District Number 6. Dr. Guerrero earned her doctorate in education from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in Educational Studies with an emphasis in leadership and higher education. Prior to Waverly School, she served in K through 12 education for 20 years as a middle school secretary, a secondary teacher, and an administrator. Dr. Guerrero has also worked throughout central Illinois in both Springfield Public Schools and Decatur Public Schools. She's also taught for 15 years in higher education as an adjunct instructor in English, English as a second language, and in business. As a university administrator for Lincoln Land Community College, and University of Illinois Springfield, she has overseen the training and implementation of online learning systems and best practices for distance learning and teaching at graduate and undergraduate levels. Dr. Guerrero is also a small business owner and uses her yoga studio and trauma crisis intervention training to serve the Warriors at Ease program to help veterans and active duty service members with PTSD. Dr. Guerrero, please come forward. Well, thank you. I appreciate the recognition and the award um, through, you know, over 20 plus years um, in education and the work that I've done being in downstate, we're often isolated. <laughs> so anything south of 80 um, and often forgotten. And there's lots of challenges um, for us, not just as um, a Latino community, um, but also as just as rural education um, to, and the impact um, and the needs in rural education are often um, not a, a priority just due to the population. It's hard for us to rally um, around when you have populations of 1,400, 800, graduating classes of 26 and less that you're serving. Um, so it's definitely a different population, but I am very grateful for this platform um, for us to recognize as a state that downstate does exist um, that there is equity and equity needs throughout the state, um, especially in education. Thank you. Our next awardee is for Outstanding Commitment and Community Service Award. And this is a uh, special award. Normally we have someone here to present to accept these awards, but this is an award presented posthumously. Uh, it goes to Ivan Gonzalez. Until his tragic and unexpected death at the age of 40 earlier this year, Mr. Gonzalez served as the Chief of Staff to Illinois State Senator Omar Aquino since the time he took office in 2016. He managed the day-to-day -day operations of the Senate District Office, legislative agenda, and community relations for the Senator. Mr. Gonzalez also organized a benefit, benefit for Kazali in Haiti, which raised funds for the Haitian American Museum of Chicago to bring school books to the village, a much needed resource since a series of natural disasters struck the area in 2010. Over 800 books were eventually shipped to Haiti from Chicago as a result of this initiative. While working with the Senator, Mr. Gonzalez prioritized the needs of immigrants within the state of Illinois. His efforts helped pass acts of legislation to expand health care insurance, COVID-19 testing and vaccination, small business assistance, and more to support the communities that he supported and loved. We welcome the Gonzalez family here today and uh, I think, accepting on his behalf, uh, Mr. Gabe Lopez. I think I saw Gabe come here. There he is, Gabe. On behalf of Ivan's family, or Ivan as we also called him, 
we want to thank you. Let me first recognize Ivan's father, Mario, his mom, Rosie, his sis sister, Vanessa, niece, Lillian, brother-in-law, John, niece, Daniela, my daughter, Stephanie, Nie nephew, Danny, and my wife, Nancy. We have a large family. <laughs> Today is a solemn day still for the family, uh, but also it's a joyous day for the family in receiving this wonderful, special honor in memory of Ivan, a very, very special person to many in this room and beyond. Let me point out a few people who were very special to him, beginning with Omar, Liz, and family, Delia, Senate President, Willie, Danny, Jesse, who's not here, and others. Those who knew him know that Ivan was a very special person who touched many lives no matter how Ivan felt, he always had a smile and a contagious laugh that everyone appreciated. In fact, I feel his presence in the room right now. He's with us because Ivan was energy. As I said before, an energy doesn't die. It stays permanently. And that's why we feel Ivan today. So thank you again, Treasure Frerichs, for this very special award. And our family thanks you very, very much. Ivan truly had a large family. And although he can't be with us here today, his memory lives on. As long as we continue to talk about him, to share memories, uh, he'll still be with us in our hearts. Now our next recipient, uh, you just saw up here, uh, because he was very close to Yvonne. The Treasurer's Award for Commitment as Elected Official is presented to a colleague and a friend of mine, Senator Omar Aquino. Senator Aquino was born and raised on the northwest side of Chicago. He graduated from Loyola University of Chicago, earning a BA in criminal justice and sociology. He started his career as a bilingual case manager at S Central West Case Management Unit at the Jane Addams School of Social Work. He went on to be a legislative assistant in the Illinois House of Representatives and then outreach coordinator for Congresswoman Tammy Duckworth. He has long held his desire to make a difference in his community and is devoted to improving education, aging services, and human services. Senator Aquino represents the second district and currently serves as a majority caucus whip. Although it's been pointed out that uh, I live in Champaign, I recently got married to one of his constituents. <laughs> so in a way, he's kind of my senator. <laughs> and Dahlia is kind of my representative. Senator Aquino, please step forward. Thank you so much for, for this recognition. Um, I, I want to thank uh, my family who's here. I actually have some special guests from Puerto Rico, my aunt and uncle, who are joining us today. My, my parents who are both taking photos here. Uh, my wife, who's holding on to uh, one of the uh, uh, my children, uh, our, our, uh, our twins, uh, little Omar, and my brother, who's holding Isa, who's uh, in dire need of a nap. Um, um, forgive me. I appreciate this award, but uh, um, I'm much more thankful and grateful for the recognition of Ivan Gonzalez. And I'll try to compose myself for the second. Um, for Ivan Gonzalez, who is a great friend to, to all of us. Um, I have my team here. Um, I, I can't really talk right now, so I, I'm not going to note everyone, but I have my team here uh, from my office, and uh, um, um, Adriana is somewhere here who um, is from my Springfield office, um, and then Willie Delgado, who's my predecessor. 
Yvonne left me a beautiful gift of, um, of a family and friends. Um, Pogo. Oh, man. <laughs> I talk every day <laughs> and do speeches all the time for my job. Um, and talking about Ivan, I, I just, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. I will compose myself because I want to get out um, some things. Uh, Ivan deserves that. Um, I feel very blessed to, to do the, the job that I do because I get to work with amazing people. Um, that, that was uh, evident when I first uh, stepped foot into uh, then Senator Delgado's office, and that became mine when I took over in 2016. Um, he had an amazing woman uh, named Lucy Roman who worked in his office who gave all of her heart to the community. She's right back there. Um, he, he left also in a, be a beautiful um, L.A. In, uh, in Springfield, Adriana Baldrup, who, um, if it wasn't for I, I wouldn't even know where the bathrooms are at in Springfield. I don't, I don't know my left from my right, but she keeps me in line. Um, and, um, and I got to have, uh, got to know uh, someone of uh, Ivan Gonzalez, who became a, a friend, uh, was my chief of staff, ran my campaign, and became a brother. Um, Gabe said, like, you know, he is with us, and, and absolutely, and, and um, I want to share a quick story um, of how I've been feeling that he's been with us even recently. Last night, we, um, I was able to invite my team to a gala. Uh, the, Mex uh, the, excuse me, the Puerto Rican Museum of, uh, of Arts and Culture had a, a gala, and we had a, a table of 10, and I invited uh, 11, peop uh, 11 or 12 people. I invited over <laughs> the amount, and... Um, but ironically, um, two people weren't able to make it, and there was one empty chair. And I didn't mention this last night. Um, but the entire team was there, and I felt that Ivan was there too, because we had we had a, um, an amazing night. Um, by the way, sorry. Um, by the way. Um, this is probably one of the worst speeches I've given in my six years, so apologies. But um, no, Ivan, Ivan uh, did so many things. He, he, he was really what a public servant is. He was behind the scenes, but he, he cared so deeply for his community and for his family. He wanted to make sure always that people were doing well. Uh, he wanted to make sure that people were laughing. And so he would send a a ridiculous section of times. He was always quick-witted with, uh, with a joke. But mo much more importantly was that he would defend um, so furiously those that, that needed help the most. He, he could not say no for the life of him. He could, did not know the words no. He wanted to be able to help even if he didn't necessarily know how he would be able to help. That was him. He was forever giving. Um, I'll end with, with, with this. Um, Ivan and I and, and most people in, in politics and in democratic politics love a show um, the West Wing because it's, it's sort of like what we hope politics uh, would be and uh, uh, President Bartlett was once giving uh, advice of uh, who to hire as the chief of staff and he said do you know someone that you trust beyond measure that will tell you no and tell you to your face when you are wrong and challenge you that is smarter than you. You have a best friend. That's your chief of staff. And for six years, that's what I had. I had a chief of staff who was my best friend. He was my brother. And I dedicate this award and all the work that I ever do in, in his memory. Um, because people like him, like the staff or the treasurer staff, those are the people that bring us up and that make our state that much better. Um, thank you, Mr. President, for being here, because while he was a staff member of, 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 of mine, he was part of the Senate Dem family. Um, and thank you all um, that, that came uh, specifically 
I, I invited people here to say, yeah, I'm getting an award, but really uh, it, it's Ivan. They're giving me an award because they're giving Ivan an award and felt like, well, I guess I got to give the boss an award too. <laughs> uh, and I'll take it, I guess. But uh, it forever will be Ivan's award. And um, just, just for, thank you so much. All right, next up, our award for Outstanding Service in Workforce and Labor is presented to Mario Lopez. Mario is the Political and Public Affairs Director for SEIU Local 1. He graduated from Illinois State University with a BA in Political Science and Statistics and History Education. He helped win a historic victory at City Council for airport workers by passing an ordinance that raised standards and increased minimum wage at both Chicago airports. He also played a critical role in the passage of a historic labor agreement between the City of Detroit and SEIU Local Number 1 members at Little Caesars Arena. Winning by a 20-point margin, Mr. Lopez also managed the AFL-CIO's $17 million race against Right to Work in Missouri. He currently serves on the board of SEIU State Council in Illinois, Missouri, Wisconsin, and Indiana. And we are pleased to present you this award. Mr. Lopez, please step forward. Um, I'll be very brief with my remarks. You know, a lot of the work that I do, I can't do without the partners um, that really help me. The partners and coworkers, such as my, you know, coworkers who are in the front lines and organizing workers um, in, you know, making sure that their collective bargaining rights um, and their pay and their benefits uh, continue not to be infringed. Uh, the partnerships um, that we have with elected officials, such as Treasurer Frerichs, President Harmon, Congresswoman-elect uh, Ramirez, and former Senator uh, Delgado and current Senator Aquino, uh, who help us really continue to make Illinois uh, the forefront uh, for labor rights and workforce uh, rights here um, in all the Midwest. And I say that truly because I do uh, politics all over the Midwest, and I will say that Illinois is a beacon uh, and a model uh, for it. Um, and finally, you know, without the community partners that are also in the front lines, right, uh, helping our members. Um, uh, you know, get access to resources um, and make sure, uh, you know, that we do a little bit, a little bit to improve the lives, right? Um, so thank you so much. I really want to appreciate it. And I also want to thank my wife, Kaylin, uh, who's in the audience here today. So thank you. Edna Jacqueline Vasquez Nunez. Uh, I'm going to read a little something about her, but I'll tell you, she's already made me tired. Ms. Nunez is an American competitor who discovered a love for athletics in her hometown of Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico. 25 years ago, she developed a love for ultra marathons. If you think that marathons sound tiring, let me explain ultra marathons. They surpass marathons as runners usually run 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 100 miles or more in extreme terrains and conditions. Since 1998, Ms. Nunez has run ultra marathons on all types of terrain in Europe, Asia, Africa, America, and Antarctica. Antarctica. Afterwards, she went on to compete in Ironman races before tackling even greater ultra marathon distances. I told you I was tired just reading this. Chicago has been home to Ms. Nunez's home since 2005. At the age of 35, Ms. Nunez became the first Mexican American to ever complete the Four Deserts Race Series, become a member of the highly esteemed Four Deserts Club. The Four Deserts Ultra Marathon Series is widely recognized as the most prestigious outdoor foot race in the world, and hopefully she'll tell us a little something about that here today. Ms. Nunez, please step yeah. forward. Uh, this afternoon is, uh, I feel so happy, very blessed, uh, celebrated the Hispanic Heritage Month with all of you. As you hear, I'm born and raised in Mexico, Monterey, in my hometown. I also immigrated with my dad in 2005 with a dream to find a better life. Uh, the sports, the endurance sports, has been my companion since I was 17 years old. And since then, I haven't challenged myself in different distances. It can be from 15 kilometers, as the treasure said and um, hundreds, 150 to 100 and beyond. I'm very thankful to all of you to having me in your thoughts and in your heart for considering me to me receiving this award. Thank you, Mr. Michael. 
his team, Mrs. Luz Maria Solis, for seeing me in all this, uh, with all these uh, times running in here and there, but also for participating in Chicago Dia de los Niños. My hard work, dedication, and love to Chicago and United States is the way that I'm giving forward to all of you for letting me be in here and open me your doors. I do it because I do it with all my heart. My intentions are to build in a solid and a strong path for our community to bring love, wellness, and sport to all of us for the present and the future generation. The sport is one of the main instruments in our society from bring not just only wellness, but also make a strong and uh, better communities for our health. Thank you so much. I've been running in different uh, places around the world. And one of the, one of the things that I did fierce in here in Chicago is find uh, the running community. And I'm very happy and very glad to see how in our city, we have many runners, many uh, groups and clubs. The mean is our city also pay attention in our health. And I hope we continue in helping all our communities to have their own running groups or, or, or um, clubs, because it's one way that we can bring wellness, the more humble and the more peaceful way. Thank you so much and happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you. Next up, our award for achievement in arts and humanities is presented to Enrique Morales. Mr. Morales is an artist, researcher, and educator. He views all three facets as integral to his creative process. Mr. Morales earned his BA from the University of Chicago and an MFA from the University of Pennsylvania's Weizmann School of Design. He is the co-founder of a nonprofit arts organization. The Northwest Arts Connection, or NAC, serves on the executive board of the Milwaukee Avenue Alliance and served on the inaugural associates board of the National Art Museum in Chicago. One of Mr. Lopez's current projects is being an artist on the mobile artist team for the city of Chicago's We Will Chicago initiative, a citywide planning initiative that encourages neighborhood growth and vibrancy while addressing social and economic inequalities in our communities. For that and all you do in the community, Mr. Lopez, would you please come forward? What an honor to be uh, included as an artist amongst some of our uh, community uh, leaders and luminaries. Um, I'd like to thank Treasurer Frerichs first for this uh, recognition and honor. And again, to include the arts and humanities amongst these other fields means uh, a lot to me. Um, I'd like to uh, just echo one sentiment, and it's nice to meet uh, Yvonne's family. Um, I know him through Dan, uh, and he was such a pillar of this community um, as well. So, um, and I'd all, I, so I'd like to say that uh, the Northwest Arts Connection was founded to facilitate the cultural transformation of what we call the Northwest Side, which is a vast, vast area um, of the city, uh, and often neglected culturally, uh, both funding-wise and representation-wise within the city uh, cultural structure. So I, I'd like to acknowledge the people who have been big supporters of ours, um, including some of our uh, state elected officials, starting with uh, two of our state reps, Will Gazzardi and Jamie uh, Andrade, as well as former state senator uh, Iris Martinez, who is one of our biggest uh, supporters. Uh, and now the new senator, uh, Christina Pazione Zayas. Um, and it's a pleasure to meet some of uh, our other elected officials here. Um, the arts are something that are incredibly important to uh, society. They're vital to our lives uh, for many reasons, not just because we can add uh, economic value to all sectors of society, but we can bring the humanity into something that is mundane. Uh, and the work that we've done so far over these last 10 years has brought us to work in some of our most under-resourced schools uh, where there isn't an art department, where school principals are having to decide whether they spend resources on uh, safety measures, including metal detectors, uh, or have an art class in their schools or a music class in their schools. The arts are also um, 
something that can transform a commercial corridor. And we have plenty of those dying every day on the Northwest side. And that's the type of work that we do uh, and that we're passionate about. Um, and we, we can also revitalize public spaces. Uh, and that's something that we do day in and day out. And that's something that I'm incredibly passionate about and something that I advocate for with the city's new uh, We Will Chicago initiative. Cultural infrastructure, we deserve to have cultural infrastructure in all parts of the city, not just our touristic areas, not just the downtown region, but every single neighborhood across the city needs to have some type of cultural infrastructure. So that's what I'm passionate about, and I, and I thank you guys for including the arts and humanities in a recognition like this. Uh, on a personal level, uh, my platform uh, includes uh, fighting and advocating for creative professionals to have a seat at the table where any and all important decisions are made. How great would it be if we had a visual artist, if we had a theater professional, a musician, uh, a poet, uh, a culinary artist um, at the table where any of your decisions are made, whether it's politics, healthcare, infrastructure, um, anything, anything that can have an impact in society. What if we had an artist at the table discussing some of these issues? What types of transformations can we have and can we see if we have a dancer at the table? Just imagine that, and, and if I can leave something with you guys, it would be that. That is what we are. We're, we can add so much more than just the talent, our, our artistic talent. The vision and mission of, of us is research and making our communities better, so thank you. And on top of um, this, I'd like to also recognize my parents who are here. We are proud Guatemalans, um, as, as Delia Ramirez is also as well, so it's nice to meet you too. Um, and often, often Central Americans um, don't get that much, um, don't get that much. So thank you for this recognition amongst, yes. And so, so thank you, thank you, Treasure. Um, and yes, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Truly, truly, un orgullo latino. Um, I want to take a quick moment to uh, give a special thanks and acknowledgement to our Latino advisory members, Ceci Martin Cabrera in attendance. Thank you, Martin, for all the work that you do and for joining us today. If we have other advisory members in attendance, can you please stand? Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> all right. Muchas gracias de nuevo for joining us today. Thank you for joining us. Um, we have lunch prepared for you. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be taking some photos in the front. Felicidades. Thank you, everyone.